If we are hoping to identify features caused by a global flood and the consequent sheet flow and channel flow of water, what criteria should we use? They should be on a large scale all over the world and originate in water-laid rock. They should be similar in appearance, suggesting a common cause and age, and importantly, they should not be being made today. They should be largely intact if they were only thousands of years old, and not millions. For instance, these dry falls in Washington, USA have large plunge pools at their base. These can only have been produced by a very large torrent coming over the edge of the cliff. There is no flow of water over the cliff today, and therefore present day conditions provide no mechanism for creating the plunge pools. Something completely different happened in the past to produce this feature and not so long ago because it is perfectly preserved. By far the most common feature of the Earth's surface is something called a planation surface. This is a flat surface produced by water flowing over it. You don't have to go further than your nearest beach to see one. This is near my home and if you look past the sand you can see in the distance a full size planation surface. The flowing water has cut away the sand to produce a vertical feature called an escarpment. The top edge of the escarpment is sharp, which means that water has not flowed over the edge. Try and remember this picture and compare it with the other ones as we tour the world. This is the same material, but water has now flowed over the edge. Try and remember this shape, especially as we look at coastal escarpments. Cape Town, South Africa, or the Tavern of the Seas, as the old sailors called it. Does the feature behind the city look familiar? The top of the escarpment is called Tabletop Mountain and is a flat planation surface, just like the previous photographs. Water has flowed as a sheet off the top, cutting channels and depositing debris on what is now the coastal plain. The southern half of the continent of Africa is ringed by these enormous coastal escarpments, with the high veld plain and Kalahari Basin behind it. Coastal escarpments and interior basins are a common feature of the world's continents, as this cross-section of the continents of Africa, South America, India and Australia demonstrates. How can this be explained from the perspective of a global flood? The present continents were formed when the floodwaters receded, but where did the waters go? Into the sea, of course, but more on that important question later. The flood water is still with us and covering three quarters of the Earth's surface. At first, most of the water would have come off the land as a sheet, leaving large flat surfaces behind, and after this, the remnant would have drained off, leaving large interior channels, canyons and escarpments. A good question is, how can these catastrophic and fresh-looking features be explained by millions of years slow and gradual erosion? They can't. Surfaces do not erode over time to become flat. Using a topographic map of South Africa, we can see the general pattern of coastal escarpment and interior basin. I have marked in blue colour the central basin and the possible arrangement of the channel flow as the basin drained. The coastal escarpments I have marked in brown. Note also that where the largest gaps in the coastal escarpments exist, such as southwest Africa, we see the largest coastal plains and continental shelves of the ocean. This is washed out material from the interior of the continent and is still there today. Is it likely that these deposits have remained undisturbed for hundreds of millions of years, or is it more likely that they have been there for 4,400 years? The topography of Australia shows the central Amadeus Basin in green, and on the east coast is the Great Escarpment and coastal plain. In South America the Amazon Basin forms the central basin with the Andes Mountains to the west and the highlands and coastal escarpment to the northeast. The Deccan Plateau takes up central India. To the east and west are the Gap Mountains forming the coastal escarpments and coastal plains. Flat planation surfaces and their remains are the most common feature of the Earth's surface and are found on every continent and in every country. 
Note the perfect flatness of this one in the west of Ireland. Surfaces do not erode flat over time. They become broken up. The Mescalero Escarpment in Mexico. How did this surface become flat over time? And more extraordinarily, why is it still so flat if its age is reckoned in millions of years? Surely this feature is much more recent. From the Arctic to the Antarctic, planation surfaces with their secondary drainage channels are with us, still recognisable even when they have been heavily modified by ice. In this picture of the Tibetan plain, the line at the top is not a cloud layer, but a vast flat planation surface. The flat plain beneath is called a peniplain, which is another very common feature and associated with planation surfaces. One of many inland escarpments in Africa formed as the interior basins drained. The wide peniplain separating the two escarpments is several kilometres across and was made by a single water flow event. Further evidence of this is provided by the large sand ripples, now lithified, at the foot of the escarpment on the lower picture. Slow and gradual processes do not produce these features, but instead destroy them. This settlement built under the shelter of an escarpment in Mali, Africa, is very similar to some found in Mexico. Despite being a continent removed, the same feature, in the same condition, has been used in an identical way for the purposes of settlement, satisfying the criteria for features having similar appearance, cause and age. A view from the top of the escarpment shows the vast extent of the peniplain, a completely flat surface as far as the eye can see. Note also the sharp edges at the top of the escarpment. Unlike the edges of a coastal escarpment, this shows that water has not flowed over the top, meaning that the area was a basin and the valley drained the basin. We are often only looking at a remnant of material. Most of the original body has been washed away. The black line and the red line join features of the same height. The space below the lines represents the material that has been removed. Before the water action, this space would have been occupied by sediment. These pillars, or buttes, are all that remain and have only survived because the power of the flowing water was reduced before these remnants could be carried away. A common feature of these flat water surfaces are rounded boulders. These boulders started off as even larger pieces of rock, which have been transported a great distance by water. During their journey, they have struck one another and other objects until they became rounded. Further impact evidence is provided by the percussion marks on the surface of the boulder. Some are very large, such as the example on the right where a man is sitting. Only a very large body of water moving at high speed could have done this. No events on this scale happen today. This mudslide in Afghanistan if it were allowed to continue for hundreds of kilometres, would eventually produce rounded boulders. Although the same mechanism, this is a valley location and not the large, flat, open surfaces we have been looking at. Consider the large size of some of these boulders. Even rock gains some buoyancy when it is in mud and water. good example of rounded boulders in Argentina. Notice how widely spaced they are, indicating they became rounded long before they came to rest. Some of these are partially buried, so there are probably many more buried underneath. The proposition by the park authorities that the cause of these rounded boulders is due to some kind of accretion due to molecular attraction is ridiculous. They are made of the same material as the landscape, and crack faults can be seen along the circumference. The only reason that anyone would suggest such an unlikely cause is through incredulity. A massive sheet flow of water over a vast area at high altitude would be impossible today, but it is consistent with the Genesis flood. These rounded boulders in Dorset, England have been transported and then buried in a huge landslide. From time to time, as the cliff erodes, the stones are released. 
Powerful, catastrophic forces, completely unlike anything that happens today, has caused this. It is asserted as fact that these rounded granite boulders weathered to this shape over many millions of years. This cannot be verified by any means and is a guess at history. The time scale of millions of years is meaningless since it lies totally outside human experience. Nobody knows what happens to anything outside of a few thousand years. The purpose of this statement, as with so much else in geology and the natural sciences, is to deny the evidence of huge catastrophic water action and the Genesis flood. What we can see is a vast flat penny plain many kilometres across, which, because of its flatness, must have been produced by water action. The rocks are the same material as the surrounding landscape. The obvious conclusion is that these boulders have been rounded by transportation in the same water which produced the penny plain. Landscapes and features such as the Twelve Apostles here in Australia are being destroyed and changed before our eyes. Erosion happens quickly, especially along coastlines. The parks officer is amazed that she has been alive to see something collapse that has been around for 20 million years. However, if she had a biblical world view about the Genesis flood at the age of the earth, she would find it a lot less mysterious. Proverbs 1 how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge?